place your bets at gg.bet. Most popular esports titles. Deposit with convenient payment options. Cool mini games. And 24 7 support for players. Sign up now for the best esports bets at gg.bet. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the CIS Minor Close Qualifier for the Star Ladder Major 2019. My name is Dinko. I'm going to be taking you through this one as your host slash commentator. And this is going to be a, a super fun one. We've got ourselves another best of three coming up. It's Gambit Youngsters you know, Warthox. Now, I'm not too familiar with too many of the players here on Warthox. Um, I'm more more so inclined to, to know about Gambit Youngsters. And I know they've got a very skilled roster, especially on Inferno. We've seen some really nutty plays from a couple of these players on this map. And obviously, Axel has joined this team. Gambit, their main team obviously being dead in the water. So they've brought uh, they brought this youngster team to pieces. And Axel leaving the main Gambit team and has got himself into uh into this one so this is gonna be super fun to to cast because they're always a very exciting team but it's gonna be warthox making their way into the b bomb site as they charge they'll be running in towards it immediately they're gonna be smoked off here on the ct side so gambit youngsters are gonna have to play the retake forced off trying to get lucky with a couple of shots with the smoke but nothing being picked up whatsoever so w2x they will have the bomb site and they can just hold on here as well because super looking to try and get his way back in once towards banana one a little bit closer there. He's going to start taking the fight as well. He'll do a little bit of damage. It receives more so than he gives. And so Gambit Youngsters being locked out of the bomb site here is looking good for W2X. But Axel's on a headshot. They find a way back in. They're going to swarm the bomb site itself. But two kills come in. Manise holds the back of the bomb site. It's Youngsters pulling it back. Mainly Axel on his own with a triple kill. And he has been finished off. It all falls onto Jackpot. And he does get it done. 1-0, to the pistol picked up by WTX, and actually there, it was mostly Axel getting the work done. You know, three kills coming in there for Gambit Youngsters, you start to think, okay, maybe they've got a chance coming back into this, but not so not so much, and I'm afraid he couldn't get that final kill. No one on his team really getting anything done. The good stuff from W2X, they find the kills needed. And at this point, it is going to be a bit of a buy coming in this one from Gambit Youngsters. They're going to have a, a mixture of CZs, Deagles, and, and uh, 5-7s. Um, they're going to try and invest what they can in this one and see what they can get done. But WTX, they should be up to zero. Unless uh, some mental heroics come out from a couple of the players here in Gambit Youngsters. We know you can definitely pull this off. But I don't know how this one's going to go. When I was looking on paper and I was kind of making my predictions for today, I obviously predicted the 2-0 the from, from Spirit. That didn't happen, obviously. Uh, I thought this would be probably the only game I was casting today that would probably go to three maps. But... We've had one three mapper. This could be another one. I think this one's going to be a close one. You actually seen Gambit youngsters play very well at Copenhagen Games. They made it to the main tournament. They didn't quite get too much done though, but they were very interesting to watch play. No be problem picking up a kill onto Inter. Is a nice shot from Jackpot. Nearly gets the second, but it's going to be Shiro to pick that one up with the P250 and not. Problem spins around the corner. It's going to be Axel and Shiro left into 2v4. Bomb will get carried on over and it'll get planted on the B bomb site. Should be a relatively simple round put together here. 2 0 for WTX. But there's an AK in the hands of Shiro and they definitely want to get that out of his hands. So Mini Mincy needs to be set on a bit of a flank. And he will find Axel. Last man alive is Shiro and uh, fighting to hold on to the AK. He actually gets that kill as well. Starting to stall by the Mac 10. 2 0 start for WTX. So coming into this one, WTX, they have got themselves AKs and a Mac 10. Gamma Youngsters have gone for the five nids. So Branson Nid Stack is on the cards here. Now I've got full USPs. They'll try and throw a grenade in towards Banana. Let's see what they can get done. It's going to be problem throwing a nade over the top of the half wall, getting himself another on the Mac 10. And this is a cleanup coming through. No problem for problem in clearing up the uh, low players, the naked players towards Banana. And so Shiro now into a 1v5. He should be fond as well.
spawn. Making his way back over towards B. They have got Shiro a little further back inside of spawn. So digits punched in. Time will tick away. And the sole USP of Shiro should not really get too much done. He'll get his head torn off. And that'll be Shiro falling apart. 3 to 0 here for WTX. I think this is where the real challenge begins, the real hurdle begins to, to arise because Gamma Youngsters have brought their buy into the Shiro on the AWP. They've got. AUGs on two players, and M4A1S and Inter's Nefani on the uh, on the FAMAS, and WTX have got themselves AK-47s and the MAC-10 in play as well. Gabby youngsters, yeah, you know, are a team that have a lot of potential. I'm looking forward to seeing what some of the youngsters can do on the big stage as they move up and sort of develop through the CIS region. So, making it to a minor would obviously be a, a good step for them. It is very far away, but. If they can even do well in the close qualifiers, that's a big step. And look at this. Inters lines up three. Beautiful stuff here with the M4A with S. Molotov goes in. He will be cleared out and Problem will take it with a MAC-10. But Mincy and Problem, they're the last two alive thanks to Inter stepping up with a triple kill. They all ran in front of him and he lines them all up, easily cleaning them through. And it will be a two-man advantage still intact for, this T for the CT side. Only Mincy and Problem can do anything about that. Just subpar of a minute left on the clock as many of the WTX players, the last two remaining ones, decide to go back towards Banana as they start to come through. It's going to be Nafani with the Molotov being tossed in. That'll slow the play. As they start to come in towards him, it's Supra here with the all holding the cross problem. He's going to hit the floor while Mincy is left on his own into a 1v4. It's not going to happen for him. And the Gambit youngsters will get themselves one on the board. Good stuff there. Very well played from Inters. And the rest of the boys is rotating very, very effectively. He's locked in on B bombsite here. You know, if one player is to fall, they've got an answer straight away. So Gambit youngsters will clean up this round. It's just a matter of time before Mincy goes on a bit of a wander and ends up getting wrecked. Or saving in banana, that's also another option. So currently it is looking pretty good for Gambit Youngsters off the back of you know the, the showing they had in the first gun run, because obviously they're the more important runs, they're the runs you should be winning. And uh, they definitely put up a good showing there. WTX, they have got another buy coming into this one. It's the AKs across every single player, utilities there. Gotta show us what they're made of. Gun runs against Gambit Youngsters. Last run was a very big individual play. Is that sustainable? We'll have to see if they've got a system here on the CT side. See if it uh, is effective. Funny enough, for Copenhagen Games, there was actually quite a bit of CIS dominance, really. Always with a team that topped the... Uh... Oh my god. What is that? Problem just with a headshot through the smoke. Nefani going to be finished off. I think I have to run back and get that bomb. That's a, that's a great advantage to find for WTX. You don't even have to uh, really fight for it. But yeah, there was, there was definitely CIS dominance at that event. Four is actually winning the, the entire tournament. Gambit Youngsters making it f uh, from the Bring Your Own Computers section to uh, to actually make it to the main tournament. So, excellent stuff done by them. The uh, CIS region is definitely producing quite a bit of young talent. This makes some uh, scary teams in the future, but multiple players stay inside a banana. Now ready to toss the utility on in, flashbangs, smokes, they're all gone in here, but WTX, they're going to try and bamboozle Gambit youngsters, but it's not going to completely fool them just yet. They will leave two players on A, two on B. 
And they've got a pretty good setup here inside the pit, so Inters will smoke himself off inside of the pit, try to stay alive, but that bits him in the axle, who's great at lining them up. Gets the two kills, Inters with one as well, but the bomb plant has to come through. That good hit should finish off Mini Mincy, and there it is. It's all on to Gospadrov to try and win this one versus three. And he should be finished off as well, and there it is. Enters finds it. Three kills for him from the pit, and two from Axel. They both get it done just standing in the pit, and that will be the defuse coming on through. I'm not going to lie, when I seen Gos Padarov left in a one versus three, I kind of pooped myself, realizing I had to say his name. Gos Padarov. Gos Padarov. I'm sure there's someone in the chat can tell me if I'm being absolutely ridiculous in the way I'm pronouncing his name. It's probably awful. But uh, I tried. That's the important part. Well, Gambit Youngsters coming into this one, I have got another buy. W2X playing it close, get the bomb plant, they've got money as well to burn. Although, they need to be careful inside a banana, as that's where the early advantage has been picked up by Gambit Youngsters. I think at an early level here, like sort of seeing these two teams from an eye test in, in the short sort of space that we have in, in terms of five runs play, I think immediately we can see sort of a level of Gambit Youngsters looking pretty strong, but Warthog's definitely giving them a bit of a, a fight, which is good to see. I like the I like their logo. Warthogs have a pretty sick logo. Much better than Gambit's, in my opinion. Axel is going to set up towards Balcony. He'll get a kill onto Flash as they move on in. Inters, he'll take the kill onto Gospadarov. Now oh, it's going to be Jackpot. Headshot from short, looking back towards the pit where Inters is currently playing from. And he'll just sit here with the AUG, waiting for a couple of players to come in towards his crosshair. As Enters peeks into the left, Mincy finished off. Jackpot into the 1v4. It'll be a kill from Jackpot. Jackpot won't fall apart. And that'll be a 3-3 three to three score line. No, you're right. You can't get any more Russian than that result. Probably the most Russian name I've had to say. Well, Kassin, I think. It's a good name, though. I like it. Gospadarov. Gospadarov, okay. Thank you very much, Often Thomas, for, uh, Often Thomas, for telling me how to pronounce it. Well, Shiro, that's a good start. As they come in towards Archway, it will be Gospodarov finished off. It will be Mincy able to find Axel. AUG picked up as well as they look towards the pit. Damage being done on a couple of players as Flash is finished off. Jack Bottle hit the deck as well, looking back into it. Nafani, oh my god, that is just beautiful. Gambit take away the pistols rather easily, and it will be 4 to 3. Well, Warthogs have been trying to get that control towards B and Banana, and sometimes they've been a little bit unsuccessful due to Gambit Youngsters being pretty dominant in that side of the map, but 
Yami Onks just haven't really used a whole lot of utility. You know, generally when you when you see the Battle of Banana in Sue, uh, we we talk about the the Battle of Banana, and, and generally when we talk about it, we usually see a lot of utility being used up, a lot of smokes, a lot of mollies, grenades there and there. But no, it's been a very sort of passive play from them, and Gambit not really wanting the challenge. They're playing very passive. It's already CT spawn already. And Warthog's not really capitalizing on it. The League One player there. The rest of them are starting to take control of the A bomb site. They want to go on in here. There's three players for Gambit Youngsters currently positioned over towards A. One off towards Long. And there's a big gap in that for Nefani to play with. Well, they have one inside of the A bomb site, one inside of the pit to play with as well. You gotta favor Gambit Youngsters defense wherever you go, though. And they've shown that they can be very solid on an individual level when it comes to these things. will be that's it. It's not the spray away. Gets two kills. Can he get another one as well as he spans to the box? It's flash and problem. Able to find those. And it's not going to do a 3v3. 13 seconds on the clock, but the bomb has been planted. Oh, it's a three versus three. Warthogs have got the bomb site, but they have to try and find their way back in. Gambit just trying to find a way to, to get a headshot. Interest is still inside of the pit. He's waiting for his teammates to get in position from long, but he cannot afford to give up this position on his own. So at this point, it's all about just trying to find a couple of kills on entry, and it's not happening for them. Problem's got a headshot. Shearer will pick up one, but Jackpot's there. Now he enters, has to spring in the action. He's found one, make it two. Is there enough time for the defuse? Though? Should be plenty of time. There we go. And uh, I, I have to be 100% sure, guys, because earlier I said I thought there was time. I let him defuse, and uh, no, there wasn't time, which was, which was sad. But uh, that was definitely time. The volume in my ears is... Super quiet, so I can barely hear the beeping of the bomb. Of course, I can try and fix that in a little. Five to three. Gambi youngsters, that's a run that uh, they definitely had a sweat for. It's unfortunate the Warthogs couldn't get it done, but Gambit Youngster is looking to try and mince them up inside of Banana this time. Lineup coming in from Supra. He will get two kills. The third one as well there from Nefani. So it's all on to Gus Badaro and, uh, of course, my boy Flash. Can they pull it off? No. He's going to use the Galil. Spray there on the Galil. Oh, my God. Gus Badaro gets two on the Galil. And actually upgrades to the AWP. He'll look through CT to try and find another, but the bomb is coming back. Gus Badaro's actually done enough here to make this round competitive. As Axel and Inter is trying to get their way back over towards the site. Time is ticking. And Gospodarov has got a smoke that will cover off CT. That will sever the information supply to the CT side. So they're going to have to boost up to try and regain that. And that's going to be Inter's. He might actually just want to kill off of this as well. But Flash is waiting for it. He read him like a book. And Inter's is finished. What a run from Gospodarov. Actually just pulling this run back. Finding them away into the game. Or into the run, shall I say. And perhaps the game now is they do have a chance to build up a bit of a lead here. Or a bit of a ch a bit of a, a string of runs should we say on the T side. As Axel will take away Flash. Goss Badarov will slither away with the AWP. And they've done it. They've finally got a run on the board. They've come close time and time again. But they've never been able to really get it over the line. Luckily for Gambit Youngsters, somehow Shiro had like 12k of the bike. So he just drops over a weapon uh, very easily to the rest of his team. And Orthox are going to have themselves an AWP in the hands of Gospodarov. AK-47s for Flash, Mincy, and Problem. They've also got that UMP for Jackpot. So, their buy is good here on both teams. But I'd have to give a bit of an edge here towards Gambi Youngsters buy. Just because they've got more utility across more players. And they've also got a the AWPs for the long range. And Shiro got the early advantage on to Gospodarov. So, you know, a man who had a lot of impact in the last round. Not this time, he will be stopped in his tracks. His Supra starts to make his way through Banana, very aggressive. You just slap him up the face with some aggression on Banana, and it works perfectly. An advantage double here on Gambit Youngsters, and they should be feeling very confident moving forward in round number 10. Should be a sick, uh, sixth on the board for them. I think Gambit Youngsters coming into the series are definitely the favourites. They've got some very talented players. A good uh, sort of 
experience on land as well playing together and they've got Axel who who started to really show a lot of potential. Uh, first time I kind of seen Axel in action was at the Supernova Malta 150k event. We, uh, I cast him there um, with Gambit and I think it was one of his first tournaments with Gambit. They actually had um, Ondik as well I believe was playing for them. So yeah, he looked like a, a definitely an interesting player. Anyway, Shiro has picked up one, make it two, good hold here, oh my god Shiro, this guy is absolutely nuts. I actually remember a play here from Copenhagen Games, I'm pretty sure it was by Shiro on the A-bomb site on Inferno. He just had one of the most incredible plays I've ever seen, like literally nuts, it was simple-esque. Here it is. Merry Christmas. Orthox might not be having fun. Dix for Dawn. I have to try and find a way back into it. And I'll definitely stop singing Christmas songs in uh, in June. Kinda crazy. Christmas doesn't feel like that long ago. But it's, it, it was ages ago. Kinda weird. Time is flying. Not in this run though. Low approach from Warthox. Shift in the way up banana. It's a very difficult bomb site to tick due to Gambit youngsters having the better weapons here and very easily could throw a hell of a lot of utility in towards that side of the map but Flashbang goes up Molotov for barbecue and here comes the push. Jackpot will be barbecued, Gospodaroff will be ripped apart and now Flash, Mincy and Problem might meet the same fates as their unfortunate teammates and that will be a crossfire being held by Supra and Nefani. Supra finished off and it will be all on Nefani and we'll take that kill on to Flash. So 7-4, relatively easy here for Gambit youngsters yet again but this is where the gauntlet is again thrown down by Warthogs. They have got a chance here, they've shown Quite a bit of potential here on their T side. They've looked like they, they've got onto the bomb sites. They've played them close. Again, it just comes down to the crunch time with a couple of mistakes being made that allows Gambit youngsters into the run. And uh, if they can tighten that up a little bit, they can definitely get a, quite a few runs here on their T side and maybe end up taking, you know, a, a decent half here. Obviously, looking at Inferno, it's going to be a map where you're looking more towards the CT side halves, but if they can do some damage here on the T side. That, that's when things start to look good, right? Ghost Arrow burning though. He's dropped a 14 HP. He nearly dies immediately at the start of the run. And as you're starting to get pretty frustrated. He's died quite early. Quite a few times. And the nade will finish him off. Axel gets another kill up towards the apartments. And that's Mincy finished off as well. This is looking very solid indeed for Gambit Youngsters. Again, a two-man advantage. Well, Robin was desperately trying to find a kill. Next map will be Overpass. This is actually Warthox's pick, and the scary part for them, me, is the Gambit youngsters are such. They're actually a good team on Overpass and on Inferno. So, um, this is kind of scary for Warthox. They're gonna have to show us what they're made of here on Inferno if they want to have a chance of taking the series or even having, you know, taking a map in the series, which would be a good result for them already. You know, Gambit youngsters is a tough team to come up against. There is some easier teams that Warthox could maybe do well against in these close qualifiers. The Fanny and Shiro have got themselves two early picks. Flash able to get one as well. And the Fanny will finish off the job. I'll be at to four. Three kills there on the board for the Fanny. And I'll be uh, already a run lead confirmed moving into the second half. Gambit Youngsters have won the half essentially here already. Um, but it's a, it's a T-side timeout coming in. A tactical pause needed as Warthox need to talk over what's going wrong what's going right and, and what you can continue to do because i mean it's not all wrong warthox have actually you know they've got onto the bomb sites they've, they've done damage but they just haven't really been able to close it over the line and finding four here already is is quite good you know, they, they obviously find the pistol and that's an important part now they need to find a couple more gun runs if they can do that they can start to get into their stride a little bit start to feel a bit more confident and and stop getting dominated as hard because 
it, it's kind of difficult when you're getting you're getting shafted and getting unlucky in a lot um in a lot of these runs you start to feel like well these guys you know we, we they're not that good we can we can definitely get a couple of runs under our belt here guys and and when you don't win them you make a couple of mistakes it becomes very tilting you can start to start to really slip into the mindset of oh we, we just aren't gonna win this are we so you have to stay positive here warthox and uh and i feel like they will still a big fan of their logo though love it definitely love it i'll buy a jersey to be honest I think our next best of three after this will be a win strike with Edward. I think it's their debut with Edward. Um, that'll be fun to watch. Cast. Warthox is sending most of their players, most of their troops in towards B. Currently a crossfire established. One player at the back of the bomb site. That is Nefani. One player relatively close to the former Super as well, so we can just sit here with the AUG. Molotov will go down to delay, smoke will come in as well. And what you can do actually after throwing that smoke is just move in front of the smoke, right? You can just kill them as they run on through it, but he'll play a little bit more passively. So holding this cross angle, flash bikes through, there's the spam, great flash. It's rid of Super, but he still walks away with a kill. Now holding back inside of Ruins, there's another one. At this point, Warthox are doing their best, but it's not really enough to find too much impact. At least the bomb plant comes through. That's job done. They'll be happy with the bomb plant. That's some extra money into the next one. But it's still another round of the board for Gambit. The 4k coming in from Supra. I think everybody on Gambit has sort of had their uh, had their time, right? So 9-4. Warthogs have called a timeout not too long ago, remember? So they have to have something planned for this. Do they have a set piece in their pocket? It is their pick. So on the T side, you want to see a little bit of preparation. You want to see what they're made of. I'm looking forward to seeing what they're brought to the server. No AWP to challenge that of Shiro. And oh, I would also say challenge those Augs. But again, in any case, very potent. So let's see if that is the case. The five rifle setup. Warthogs are going to go back and pick up the bomb. I know never really to get too far ahead of myself because I've seen a 12-3 half from Spirit today going up, up against Waterfalls' team and they ended up uh, throwing that 12-3 lead and end up uh, going to the three maps and only barely winning the final one. So I need to, uh, you have to keep an open mind in these things. Yes, it's looking good for Gambit at the minute. They're finding every single kill. And it's uh, it's not looking too great for Warthox, but there's still a chance. We always have to give that minute chance, like even if it's minuscule, if it's very tiny indeed. There's always a chance, and you have to try and find that chance. I feel like I can give him a big motivational speech right now. I feel like it should be on the motivational speech YouTube channel. I need sort of the uh, time by Hans Zimmer playing in the background. That would be brilliant if we could get that. Realistically, I could do it, but probably get copyrighted. Don't really want to do that on Star Ladder's channel. So uh, let's not do that. Inter is able to get himself a kill early on for the boys on Gambit Youngsters. Warthox haven't really been able to get too much done here, and I'm afraid. You know, it's it's not enough for, I think, I, well, it could be if you win the pistol and then have a flawless sort of half after that, then it's definitely doable, but obviously they want to get a little bit more than four on the board. If they can get five here at the half, they'll be relatively happy. Probably very happy in comparison to 11-4, but we'll see what they can get done. They start to send two players up towards A. The uh, third will be joining them, and it seems like the fourth is just going to be left in Banana. That player is, of course, problem. He'll cut off rotations if anybody wants to walk down Banana, but he has to rely on his teammates now. Three of them going in towards the A bomb site. It's going to be 3v3 here as well, because rotations have come in from Gamut Youngsters, and they'll just leave three players in the A bomb site at the start. They have another one that's relatively close inside of CT, so this is going to be so difficult to take control of. You know, they haven't been able to find an opening just yet on the T side, and they're a man down as well. They're going to go for the run boost to try and go on up, but they don't really spot anybody on it. And so Gabby Youngsters, they realize, you know, we've got the man advantage. What's the point in us taking the fights? We'll just wait. We'll wait for you to come to us. And that's currently the setup they've got going on on the A-bomb site. There goes a kill from Flash. That's the trade. Nefani 
Standing with his near dot, not expecting the close play. And so this could be a split. Super realizes that, gets the information that they're probably running in towards CT. Smokes himself out into the open, and I can play on the edge of the smoke. Ten seconds, the bomb plant has to come in. Super could deny it all. Goes for jackpot instead. The bomb plant comes in, and this is excellent. There's still a chance here for Warthox. A nice quick rotation, nice reactionary play, and they get in towards the B-bomb site. Shiro will get one kill on the Mincy, but the rest of the rotation is there. It's going to be very difficult to hold on here for Flash and Problem, but if they do it, if they manage to pull it off, this is excellent. It could be five. Problem's got two. Maybe it's three overall in the round. And he's looking for his quad kill. Diffusing the bomb is into his problem. Surely peaks. And there it is. The quad kill that gives five to Warthox. They are in this game. And with a, with a pistol pickup in the second half, they could very easily compete. A team effort across the board from Gamut Youngsters. A good half, I have to say. Warthox... Every round they won came down to very close scenarios, but they managed to pull it off. Problem has been a big carry for them, a large disparity between bottom and top. Gospodarov only on three kills, but has been... His, two of his kills, you have to remember, are a reason they won one of the runs, so... He's definitely had some impact. And he's got quite unlucky a lot of the time as well. Dying quite early to nades, Molotovs. It's kind of unfortunate in his role, and the team is to take banana, but... Couldn't quite get it done too successfully a lot of the time. Gambit youngsters are going to be sitting here feeling a little bit pissed that they didn't win that last one, but also feeling rather confident. Got a smoke and a flash on both Shiro and Inters. But they have got something planned or up their sleeve here, and it looks as though they are going to go towards that A bomb site. With multiple players. The smoke execute coming in towards B. It's going to be a bit of a fake. And that's going to try and be it out of rotation. They've currently got three players here. They'll send one player in. That's interest to try and do some damage. He'll walk in in the zone. But it is going to be the play straight out towards Balcony. But Gospodarov is sitting waiting. He won't get himself one. Mincy able to get another. But it's flashing Gospodarov. They are finished off. And all the man advantage is with Gambit Youngsters. The rotation coming in from B. They'll have both players make it away through CT. Mincy in library. Looking for a head, just some player to overextend to give them a slight chance back into this. But at this point, Gabby Youngsters, they don't need to. They've got the info that there's one player towards long as well off of that jumping peak. So look at this. Nafani realizes he can just start to rattle shots whichever way he likes. As it's Shiro taking away Mincy, jackpot into the 1v3. And that is where the time will take it, will be. 11 to 5 here from Gambit Youngsters on Inferno. And they do get that start that they so desired moving into the second half. The scary thing is again... Oh no, jackpot for this off as well. The scary thing for me obviously coming into this is this is the pick from Orthox. This should be the map that they feel comfortable on, but not the B. And they have got technical pause coming in, so hopefully it doesn't last too much longer. We've got a pause on players dropping from the server. Hopefully it turns rather swiftly. So, the technical pause undone. And we are ready to get into things. It's going to be Warthox on the CT side. It's going to be the scout and play on Flash. It's going to be the MP9 there from Mincy. And pistols for the rest. So, this is not looking too likely. This will end up in too much success for the CTs. But Gamma Youngsters, they need to be careful and respect it nonetheless. And so, they will send most of their players towards Banana. Exchanging weapons here between Nafani. After we took initial damage, dropping... 
to 31 HP. And will be Warthox holding Banana with four players. They have four players on the B-bomb site. Only one towards A. And he's actually rotated back towards Library. Oh no. This is not good. If Gamma Yogg's just walking to A, it's over. I'll probably see if the save call come in from Warthlox. Like that that's the general consensus when you have one of these runs is okay, we've bought everything, we'll invest and we'll stack one side of the map. If they go to the other side of the map, we just save because we're gonna have to eco anyway in the next. So they make the call just to have something to work with into the next run. And I think that's an alright call. I honestly do think that's good. So let's see if uh it's not going to pay off. Gambit are going to go in towards A. But it'll be interesting to see if they do just save or they attempt a retake. The retake will be rather impossible. And Axel has dropped Flash. It's pretty much a save call already here on the B-bomb site. And uh, they'll go for that save right now. So good stuff from Gambit youngsters though. Making sure they get as much, as much information as possible. They'll send Axel in. He'll realize it's empty. Calls the rest of his team now. Gets the one kill on the player that was standing there. And that'll be 12-5. Four away. I'm taking us to the second map. Of the best of three. Second map being Overpass, being Gambit Youngster's pick. It's a very scary map, a very scary prospect for Warthox. Especially if they don't get any momentum or confidence built up here on their map pick. Overpass is a map we've seen Gambit youngsters play well on against on some solid teams. I've seen them in Dreamhack open qualifiers play pretty well on that map. Although here on Inferno, you know, they're not they're no slouches on this map either, which is is kind of sad because I think the map pool um, of Gambit youngsters is probably a little bit deeper than that of Warthoxes. So pretty much any map you go towards, they're gonna feel pretty comfortable on. And you know, if Warthox only have a couple of maps to go at, and the specialist ones Inferno, and he's like, oh. We have the best chance of beating them on Inferno, won't we? So uh, they go for that pick. You know, it's a risky pick in terms of Amiox is obviously a good team on it. But you have to play to your strengths as well. And I think that's important. You know, if you're a new, if you're a team that's relatively new or haven't had as much experience to develop your map pool against better teams, then you're generally going to find yourself in a bit of a predicament. Do you want to play to your strengths or their weaknesses? And generally, when you're an underdog by quite a substantial margin, you'll want to play to your strengths just to show what you're made of essentially show that you've got some tactical prowess alongside of a system that works and i think if you're trying to develop a map like inferno and it's one of the maps you've chosen and strategies are working against weaker teams then that's good but when you go up against a stronger team you can find out what works on inferno like in your setups and what doesn't and you can sort of adapt and change that to play against the better teams which in turn will be the, the weaker teams as well pretty easily so it's a good way to improve and i think this is definitely the way to go for warthox They have shown something here on Inferno. Not a whole lot, but I'm close in quite a few runs. I'm sure when they look back at this, they'll realize, you know, some things they could have done better or things they can improve on as Axel will take away Mincy and it will be the man advantage for the T side. On the A-bomb site, there you go. The bomb will get planted for inserts, and the rest of WTX are over towards B. At this point, do they want to go for another save and let them go up to 13-5? And, you know, well, that's that's the call. I would have liked to have seen a couple of them go for a couple of exit frags. You know, they're going to be able to buy in the next round anyway. I think Flash definitely could have went over and just sat there and see what he could find. But I think saving the Kevlar is not a bad shout either. You know, you want to carry over whatever you've got. You've got quite a bit of utility on a couple of players, so... Why not just keep that instead of throwing it away for no reason? So 13-5. Only three away here, Gambit Youngsters, from taking Inferno. Time to step it up here for Warthox. They have got themselves an AWP on Gospodarov. Let's see what he's made of on the CT side. This is where they need to step up. Oh my god, Axel. This is just BM. 
Running right through the smoke in the mold of him on banana. He's got to run into B. A great flash spike. Oh no. That is just sheer good utility and a faster play from Gambit youngsters. They just know, okay, we're better. We're going to run right through the smoke. We're going to take the fights. And this is disres <laughs> disrespect to the max of Axel. Two kills coming in. The flash spike on the second was good as well. They know there's going to be an attempted trade there, and definitely the flash didn't come in, the trade was almost there. But 100% would have been there. But Axel, the flash spawn from his teammate, he knew it was coming, and he gets the second kill. Excellent stuff. More thoughts are left into a 3v4. They're going to have to save on the other end of the map. What a play. What a stinger move from Gambit. Running right through B, cutting through them. And they had no chance. That's a blink and you miss it round there from Gambit Youngsters. And it'll be 14 to 5. Literally only two rounds away not from taking this away. I think at this point, if Gambit win this one and they kill everyone on the Warthog side, it's probably going to be over, I think, because... It'll be a whole lot of cash to work with for Warthox, and even when they've had the rifles, they haven't really been able to, to, to bring it to Gambit. I think at this point, I'm, I, I am forgiven for saying Gambit, because there, there isn't another Gambit. Let's be real. There is technically, but there isn't a Gambit playing, so... You know who I'm talking about. Well, this does make up for, uh, for our earlier game that went to three maps, double overtime. 1614 and 1610. So, it's back on schedule a little bit. There'll be two kills coming in from Gambit Youngsters towards A. They'll start to move on through, and it's going to be the AWP looking down the barrel towards A long. Nefani needs to be careful. He's caught out in the open. Flash will take that kill. That's actually a one man advantage for Gambit Youngsters. A chance here for Warthox to maybe step back into it. But, uh, need to let Inters out of the bo out of balcony here. Being left by his teammate, blocked by him. The cool thing is for Gambit Youngsters as well, right? They can get the Gambit stickers on their guns. So even even though, you know, they aren't at a major or anything, they can still have their, their team logo on their guns. It's, it's pretty cool. But uh, anyway, problem will get one on the Shiro. It's going to be a 2v3. And I think at this point, it's pretty safe to say it'll be Matt Point here on Inferno. And that is a good kill. Flash and problem will end him. And Inters will be dropped to 12 HP. Into the 1v2. And it's saved on over. Map points here for Gambit on Inferno. Looking to take this one over the line to bring us to their second, which is, of course, going to be overpassed. And that is going to be the pick of Gambit Youngsters. So. Things are only looking harder and only looking uphill here for Warthox, but they have shown some tenacity at the start of this game. Not over. Let's see what they can do in round 21. Maybe they can get a couple of rounds to make this look like a, a closer affair. Make it a closer affair. Gambi yeah, youngsters will pick up the early kill. It's Nafani taking Gospodarov. An advantage there on the CT side. Probably gonna hold on to it for a little bit longer as well. They start to make their way through. It will be Gambit Youngster shaping up for an A hit. The bomb is still towards T stars. The rotation coming in from WTX. This could be a very, you know, sting in towards the A bomb site. Have the utility thrown in there, then rotate straight away to B. That that could definitely be the play. Only problem I can see right now is problem for Gambit. He's uh, he's currently in banana. He could definitely cause a problem if they decide to rotate back towards B, but the bomb has been brought back over towards second mid, which makes it look like they want to go in towards this A, execute. And they have got the utility lined up. They need to be careful. Someone has to be watching their back because problem could have moved through on the flank there. 
Super Ray is going to be standing here with the SG as he starts to move on in 44 seconds. Flash going to pick up towards Long, gets the headshot, could have been finished off there a little bit sooner, but he is dropped by Axel. And now it's only a 4v2, not much of a chance standing here for Mincy, locked inside of the pit. Multiple players running him down, and we can see Mincy just hiding, Kyron in the pit. He's doing damage, he's got to a valiant attempt, but he has been finished off. A 16-5 performance here from Gambit Youngsters, a team effort, 17 kills on 3 players, 14 on to and a very very well spread out performance across the board and a valiant attempt from the boys on uh, on Warthogs. Any problem? He's definitely shown some potential there. So hopefully we get to see more of that on Overpass, which we'll be going to after this short break. So make sure you stick around. I'll be back with Overpass after the break. Place your bets at gg.bet. Most popular esports titles. Deposit with convenient payment options. Cool mini games and 24/7 support for players. Sign up now for the best esports bets at gg.bet.